Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over how to choose which Studio One delay to use. Studio One offers a multitude of stock plugins, not least of which is the number of delays that you have available to you. But it can be a little confusing which one do we choose? Which one do we want to use on this part? What's the difference between these ones? Well, that's what we're going to go over today. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at the delays offered inside Studio One. Okay, so here we are inside the session, and you can see I already have the three delays available from Studio One open. We have analog delay, beat delay, and groove delay. Now, this isn't going to go over all of the different controls on all of the different delays that we have. I have a series of videos out there going over the stock plugins. If you're looking for some of those, I'll put a link to the playlist for the stock plugin series in the description of this video. But looking at things right off the bat, you can already see that there is something different about each one of these. Obviously, Analog Delay has its interface revamped. In the video that I go over all of the controls with Analog Delay, that was from version 4, and it looked very similar to the way Beat Delay and Groove Delay looked. But obviously, it's gotten a makeover since then. A lot of the controls are still the same, but there is the added state space drive to the Analog Delay here. In Beat Delay, this is going to lock the delays to the tempo of your song. Now, you do have a lot of options, anywhere from a 64th note or a 64th note triplet, all the way up to four bars. And that's a very long wait for these delays to happen, but there might be a case for it. But you can see I'm not able to actually turn off the sync like I am in the analog delay. In the analog delay, I can just have this free floating to a certain number of milliseconds or seconds. If I turn sync on, then it locks to the beats. And that's what beat delay is doing. It's locked to the beats. Then if we come over to the groove delay, you have four stages of what they're calling taps of these delays when they're hitting. And you're able to have that be just straight on the beat itself. So you can see with tap one, I'm moving it back a number of different grooves or steps within the delay itself. And because this selector is not pushed to the left or right, it is locking onto these points in the step selector. But if we look at tap two, we can see that it's on step two, but it's delayed. It actually turns it into a dotted delay because it's offset so much. And this slider allows us to change that amount of offset to 100% or straight all the way back to dotted, which is about 150%. Or you can have it in front of the beat and you can actually reduce it, making it more like a triplet style. And you can do this individually per tap. So maybe I want a big gap between two and three, but I want one and four to be straight on. Then in Groove Delay on the bottom, you also have the LFO section, which allows you to modify that tap of the delay without altering the other ones because you can have them all set to their own filters or cutoffs or resonances. So if you're looking for a delay that is locked right onto the beat, you know the BPM of your song, you know exactly what kind of delay you want, maybe the best option for you is going to be Beat Delay or analog delay because you can enable sync on analog delay. If you're dying for that quarter note delay, either one of these is going to do the job for you. If you're looking for your delays to be off time a little bit or maybe have a little bit of flavor and some changes to them, then maybe you want to go with either analog delay or groove delay because this will either allow you to, in analog delay, use milliseconds for your delay times or in groove delay, alter the location of the steps in that delay by either making it shorter or longer towards a triplet or dotted notes. Then if you're looking to flavor things up, like we said before, analog delay has the state space drive section in it and the groove delay has the LFO section on bottom. So I have a vocal soloed right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do quick little demos of all three of these. I'm gonna go for a quarter note delay so you can hear what each one is doing about a quarter note difference with these delays. So here we go, we'll start with analog delay. Take a look too, because my dry wets are going to have a blend of both the dry vocal and these delays in there. What we'll do though is as it's playing, I'll drive this all the way up to wet. Tell the whole thing down. 
Kick out the roots from the old ground. The deadbeat ideas don't need to be to me. Leave the world or town. Tell the whole thing down. Kick out the roots from the old ground. The deadbeat ideas don't mean So you can see these three different delays give you a lot of different options. Beat delay is very clean. It's exactly what you need it to be. It's locked into the beat. It does allow you to do some coloring by just filtering off the top and bottom, or you can even do a little bit of offset by milliseconds with the offset control at the very beginning. This is also on a mono channel right now. If you had this on a stereo channel, it would look more like this, and there would be this middle section where you could do some modulation of the left and right channels. You're just giving you a little bit more options of changing things up a bit. The analog delay was exactly that. It had a little bit of movement, but when we went towards the wet, you saw I was really driving the saturation of the state space section and getting a nice amount of grit while still also doing that same while still also doing that same low and high cut i was able to just filter out all this stuff i didn't need i could go a little further too but the drive is really what was working for this one and it has an lfo in it as well to kind of give it a little bit of movement then the groove delay is a creature unlike the other two it is kind of its own thing. It has step delays and even in the default setting, but switched to quarter notes, you can hear those delays. They don't lock right in. They kind of bounce wherever you have it set on each one of the taps. So once I hit stop and the actual vocal was decaying and the delays were just going, you heard it wasn't just locked in. They were kind of offset from one another. I understand this doesn't really answer the question of which delay should I use? but it shouldn't anyway. It should be an eye opener or really an ear opener for you to know what these tools can do so that you can pick the sound you're going for. You want something clean? Maybe the beat delays for you. Want something to dirty it up a little bit? Let's go with the analog delay. But do you want to offset multiple different steps in your delay? Then groove delay might be for you. And there's nothing saying you can't use all of these inside your session. Maybe one plug-in for this part and a different plug-in for another part. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timplansbomb.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.